and let us say the inflation rate uh, in India is 9%, uh, say uh, around there. Uh, if you take the consumer price inflation, then uh, something like that is what is happening. So uh, the real rate of interest on uh, G sex dollar from the uh, is zero uh, percent. So the story here is not very different from um, what you have in Japan or um, the US. Um, so people are holding uh, these bonds even at zero uh, percent. Does that mean that they are safe? Why would you hold this? So does that mean it, it's safe? Well, it's not a completely free market uh, for government bonds. Uh, the specific form that it takes in India uh, is that you have a statutory liquidity ratio imposed on commercial banks. This is 24%. Uh, so, the government of the RBI uh, imposes this uh, rule on commercial banks, and commercial banks have to invest in government uh, bonds uh, um, to this extent. Now, I know uh, many banks hold excess uh, reserve, but excess uh, government bonds. That is uh, uh, another story. But the heart of the matter is that um, uh, it's not a really market determined interest rate that you have in Now, hypothetically, it won't be wise, of course, but suppose, just to uh, complete our analysis, if the SLR regulation was not there, and the banks and of course also uh, other financial institutions were free uh, to choose whether or not to invest in government bonds, then you could possibly have a situation in which uh, they would be willing to invest at uh, 9% yield. In this case, the yield would uh, uh, go up, and if there is uh, lack of confidence due to various uh, reasons, then uh, the story here could be. Uh, not exactly the European Greek or Spanish kind of story, but uh, it won't be the stable story that we are otherwise familiar with. Now, uh, returning to Japan, uh, of course, uh, I, I don't know the details, uh, but as far as I know, they don't have all the part of SLR uh, there, but it takes uh, various forms. For example, again, to take an analysis from India, uh, there is no SLR requirement on uh, LIC or GIC. However, uh, there is, uh, if you call it an implicit understanding, uh, these financial institutions do invest in uh, government bonds. Uh, in Japan too, if you have these understandings between the financial sector and the government or the central bank, then you could be having investment in government bonds at very low rates of interest, which uh, should not be interpreted to mean that they view these as very safe assets. The debt GDP ratio in Japan uh, is probably the highest in the world. It's in excess of 200%. It's much higher than even for Greece, uh, or the same or the which are in the news uh, all the time. But what is happening in your way is that you have a truly market determined uh, interest. And uh, they haven't been uh, tempted by imposition of uh, rules such as SLR or implicit understanding uh, that uh, these parameters should be uh, in one way or another required to invest in uh, But isn't it the story? Some people say that quite the other thing is that. Uh, Greece cannot print its money. That's why it cannot really afford to have such a high. It's like a foreign. In, uh, it's like a foreign debt. But Japan is like an internal debt. So I, if, suppose the debt goes up beyond 200%. Ultimately, people know Japanese government can, theoretically speaking, 
print the yen and pay it back. Whereas the Greece doesn't have the power to print the euros and pay it back. So, uh, I'm glad you said that. So, this brings us back to uh, why uh, the Japanese are uh, wanting a higher inflation rate, uh, wanting more quantitative easing. Um, now, that, uh, there are two reasons. One is, of course, with this, you hope to boost the economy. But there is a second uh, reason now that doesn't get explicitly stated, but uh, that is an important reason, uh, which is that uh, the part of the public there is fixed in nominal value. The government of Japan says that I owe 100 yen to so and so. Uh, regardless of the price level, now if you have difficulty paying that debt or rolling over that debt, then what you can do is uh, to engineer a uh, higher inflation rate. Uh, with that higher inflation, you have higher nominal GDP gross domestic product. With that, you have higher nominal amount of taxes coming to the government. So, uh, with the larger tax collection nominal values and with the fixed nominal debt, uh, your burden uh, reduces. So, uh, it's a way to overcome the public debt uh, problem. Uh, incidentally, that could be an important reason why the governments are uh, not keen on issuing index uh, debt. Index debt is where the nominal value of the debt uh, keeps getting revised as the price level goes down. Of course, uh, the interest rate on such uh, bonds is lower. But uh, what index does, debt does is uh, it avoids giving the government an option to engineer inflation so as to default it in real uh, terms. So let me put it another way. Uh, Greece has defaulted openly, transparently. Uh, the Japanese government uh, may be doing so in future in a non-transparent uh, manner, uh, implicitly uh, they would pay the nominal value but not pay the real value because the uh, value they can put as And I just included this uh, data. This is on the Nikki uh, stock index. Uh, it still bothers me, uh, even though I have known this fact for uh, two decades now, which is that the index was at something like 39,000 in 1989. And uh, it is, uh, I think now it is 11,000. And when it touched 10,000 and 11,000, um, investors across the world, not only in Japan, elsewhere, were very happy that the Japanese stock market has gone up. It has gone up uh, relative to uh, the 8,000 uh, figures uh, which has been touched some time back. But in the context of the uh, peak of 39,000, uh, it is uh, still be below and that too after a gap of two decades. Uh, incidentally, this will be a lesson in our minds whenever we hear from many people in the equity market saying that equity always pays in the long term. Equity usually pays in the long term. But it does not always pay in the long term, and this is not the only example, so this is a major uh, drastic example of uh, that. Okay, so let's uh, come to India, uh, and here I want to talk about uh, the uh, capital flow. Remember what we started with, uh, capital flows, uh, volatility in capital flows, the same rate determination, and now we want to link it also with the stock, stock market uh, volatility. So, the, the story here is that um, the foreign institutional investors uh, move in and out 
when they move in, then the stock prices go up, and when they move out, the stock prices go down. Uh, and there's a lot of volatility there. And uh, reading from this, I have also been voices saying that uh, we should restrict the movement of FII money because uh, this is not good for the economy for uh, these reasons. Um, there, there is wisdom there. Uh, but uh, one needs to move a little more uh, carefully there and not uh, mix up uh, some arguments. So, but before I proceed further, let me give a quick example. In the last uh, one year or so, um, if I remember my business correctly, the FIIs have popped in about 25 billion uh, US dollars, uh, uh, which means more than 1 lakh crore rupees. And we've also seen in the last one year the stock market going up by about 25%. Uh, this is an example of the correlation between the BSE census and the uh, FII inflows. And you can take earlier years in which uh, the, there have been FII outflows and the stock market has uh, gone down. So uh, the part that I was saying is that uh, before we say that uh, it is the FII uh, as the complete villain of the entire story, we should be careful about a few other uh, assets. Uh, that, that may be the story, but um, these other nuances are there. Um, and also in terms of policy, uh, what needs to be done. Uh, possibly alongside uh, some kind of capital controls. So here we have, uh, how come they move uh, suddenly in and out? Now, is it that they get their information faster than the local investors? Whether you have the LIC, the GIC, or the uh, Indian Mutual Fund, uh, there is a difference between the two. The FIIs move a lot more quickly. Do they get information faster? Uh, after all, why is it uh, that they move that? If, if it is the case that they get their information faster, is it the case that they are getting insider information? Now, insider trading, insider um, trading on insider information is insider trading, which is illegal. You have, a, you have an issue there. So, but, but this thing has not come up uh, earlier. So there is a need to uh, look out uh, for uh, this and in case this is responsible then the policy implication is that the SEBI needs to look at insider trading particularly amongst FIIs before we get started on capital controls to uh, restrict the movements. <coughs> Now, uh, there could be another thing, which is that, no, they don't get their information more quickly, but uh, they process their information more quickly. There's a difference between the uh, two. So it could be that uh, LIC and the FII both get the information at the same time, but uh, the FII processes it faster, they take decisions faster, the LIC and the others uh, don't do it so quickly. So, I mean, if that, I'm just going over various possibilities uh, to uh, diagnose and to arrive at uh, the appropriate policy implications of each kind. Uh, as uh, managers, when you move into um, banks, financial institutions, or even non banking sector, uh, you work and maximize profits uh, within policy parameters. So it's important to understand uh, what uh, policies are doing and how a change in policy can affect uh, profitability for our firm. So uh, now I think the second part first. Um, it, it does seem that there is uh, a disadvantage that uh, we have in India. 
and that's partly related to uh, the uh, financial situation uh, in India. It is still limited, I think, going to more specifics of uh, that at the undergraduate level, at the postgraduate level. Uh, but the point is, it's not like um, uh, the Institute of Chartered Accountants in India. As far as accountancy goes, uh, we had uh, uh, a good tradition uh, and we have competence. Uh, but uh, when you move from accounting to finance, uh, it seems to me that we are not as strong as we are uh, in accounting. And that puts us uh, at some disadvantage and it gets partly reflected in things like FII's uh, behavior and uh, domestic financial institutions uh, behavior. So that is one part. But the policy implication of that, long term policy implication of that is rest uh, elsewhere. Uh, and this is a talk taking a broader view, uh, there's a problem with the financial situation. But there's another thing, uh, which is that uh, when you have the foreign institutional investors, these are fund managers who operate on behalf of companies. These are foreign investors that they uh, work for. So to the extent that the returns of FIIs are more than the returns for domestic in, uh, institutional investors, then who is getting the benefit? Now, to, to the extent that we as Indians invest in domestic institutions, and the Americans and Europeans invest in the FIIs, then the uh, better decision making or the quick performance, uh, the benefit of that is also foreign. Uh, the policy implication of uh, that is that uh, there is a need to allow Indians to uh, invest through the uh, FII so that the benefit doesn't go only to the foreigners, it should go also to the Indians. After all, the money is uh, being earned uh, here. <coughs> Next question. Uh, do they move out uh, suddenly due to better opportunities or not? Now, they could be going out for different reasons, could be. Going out or coming in. So, so suppose. Um, uh, suddenly there is a better opportunity in Brazil. So what the FII would do is to sell in India, uh, take that money and move and invest in Brazil, if that is the situation. But if that is the case, then the solution to that is that uh, there is a need to allow the LIC, the GIC and the HDFCs and for that matter the local retail investors to invest uh, abroad. So uh, what we have done in terms of our policy is to leave the uh, opportunities abroad for foreigners and only opportunities here for uh, Indians. So if this is the case, then there is a need to uh, allow Indians to invest abroad. Uh, it's not that they are not allowed, but there are uh, uh, stumbling blocks, there are uh, irritants, there are even tax laws uh, working against. Uh, investment. Uh, now, uh, do FIIs move on? Do you move on crops and India? Uh, why this particular thing? When you do go to Saskatchewan, this was an IT firm uh, in which um, uh, suddenly it was found that. Um, there were uh, all sorts of wrong things happening in the company. The accounts had been uh, passed, even the auditor's reports uh, were not uh, correct. Uh, the information provided to the market was not correct. And when that episode happened, uh, that's the time around FII's uh, moved out. So, to the extent that uh, the FII moved out suddenly due to news on something like this, then uh, the policy implication is. Um, that you reduce corruption, uh, do something about that. Uh, the uh, SEBI was unaware of what was happening in um, Satyam. Uh, BHC, NSC were not uh, aware of what was uh, happening there. So uh, the policy education is different. Now, it could also be that the FIA panicked. Um, in an earlier lecture, I talked about um, movements of money due to 
fundamental reasons and due to uh, panic or animal spirits or uh, whatever else uh, one may call it. Now, if it is the case that they uh, panic, then what is the implication? Policy implication? You know, if they panic and they leave suddenly, then the prices crash. But if they do, then that is a wonderful opportunity uh, at home. We, we can all buy at uh, low prices rather than when this happens. Um, so, if they panic and leave suddenly, then uh, that is not a good reason for capital controls. Because uh, it gives an opportunity and it, in fact, uh, it, it, the public is constrained and has lost for the government can buy and press the uh, In Hong Kong, in 1997-98, uh, the Hong Kong Monetary Authority has done the uh, this. They intervened and they bought uh, stocks uh, in large quantities. And uh, in fact, um, when the price of private, uh, when normalcy got restored, uh, they made money. So not only did they stabilize the economy, they also made money uh, for the economy. Uh, let, let, let me stop here. Uh, the point of uh, this is to be careful about uh, the uh, role, uh, uh, what FIR is doing and what the uh, policy uh, needs to be. Uh, what I want to take you from here is uh, to the role of foreign exchange reserves and to the role of a new instrument which is the credit line which the RBI uh, put in. I, I will continue.